Welcome back. In Taiwan, the wife and a brother-in-law of former President Chen Shui-bian have been named as defendants in a money laundering case involving Chen himself. If found guilty, they are liable to seven years imprisonment. The ruling in Kuomintang revealed that on the eve of the presidential election in 2004, a huge sum of money was transferred through mysterious bank accounts, and it may have to do with Chen Shui-bian. These pictures of former Taiwan President Chen Shui-bian and his wife were taken recently at their home in Taipei. They have seldom ventured out since authorities imposed restrictions following allegations that Chen might be involved in money laundering. A Kuomintang legislator, Chiu Yi, has produced what he calls evidence that on the eve of the presidential election in 2004, that is, the day before Chen was shot while out campaigning, a huge sum of money was moved around within Chen's Pan Green camp, and it's believed Chen himself might have been involved. Chiu alleged that a key member of the Democratic Progressive Party, or DPP, deposited 50 million Taiwan dollars into a bank account, then just three minutes later moved more than 83 million dollars to a different account. He also suspects that Chen and his wife accepted more than 3 million US dollars in advantages from a construction firm. Part of the money was allegedly first transferred to the bank account of Chen's brother-in-law, Wu Qingmao, and then onto Chen Shebian's daughter-in-law, Huang Jiuqing's account. Chen's wife, Wu Shu Chen, and her brother, Wu Qingmao, have both been named by prosecutors as defendants in the case. Wu Qingmao failed to show up for a meeting at the public prosecutor's office this morning, and authorities have not ruled out the possibility that he and Wu Shu Chen may be questioned together. <laughs> Meanwhile, Chen Shibian's daughter, Chen Xinyu, who has been hounded by the press for months since her father's fall from grace, had yet another breakdown today. She revealed that Kaohsiung Mayor Chen Zhu, as well as the DPP's Su Jingchang and Frank Xie, all received financial support from Chen Shibian during the election. <laughs> who hasn't asked my father for money during their campaign, she asked. The entire election system is flawed, she added. In response, Chen Zhu said Chen Shui-bian was the chairman of the DPP during the mayoral election, which was why the party's fund would be part of her campaign money. Meanwhile, reports in Taiwan allege that Wu Xiu Chen used a company in Hong Kong to launder some of her alleged ill-gotten gain. But the person in charge in the firm's office in Chimcha Choi today issued a statement saying his is not the company referred to by Taiwan media and that he has never had any financial dealings with Chen Shui-bian or his wife. There are no signs of a large-scale Russian withdrawal from Georgia today, but Russia's media has reported that an expected pullout has begun. Russia's president promised to start withdrawing forces from positions in Georgia today, but suggested they could stay in the breakaway region, South Ossetia. Meanwhile, as the West talks about retaliatory measures against Russia, Georgia's president is talking reconciliation. James Legilia again. Russian troops appear to be pulling out of the strategic central Georgian city of Gori, a sign of a looser Russian grip on the city. The Russian checkpoint at the entrance to Gori was less fortified than in previous days. In the city, where buildings were blackened by fire from fighting or bombing, there was a light presence of Russian troops and a few tanks. But while Russia has decided to pull out of the country, it apparently wants to leave as much damage as possible. Besides the reports of infrastructure damage, Georgia is now accusing Russia of deliberately starting a fire, which threatens to destroy a forest regarded by Georgians as a national treasure. Russia denies bombing the forest like it's denied destroying infrastructure. But the West is intent on punishing Moscow for its invasion. U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice is heading to Europe today to talk with NATO allies about what message the West should send to Russia. But Georgian President Mikhail Shakashvili today called for negotiations with Russia to prevent relations between the two countries from slipping into definitive estrangement. James Lajili at TVB News. Iran says it's ready to help fellow Muslim states launch satellites after it used a home-built rocket to put a dummy satellite into orbit. The United States has called the development troubling because the long-range ballistic technology used to put satellites into space can also be used for launching weapons. Tehran's claim of its successful launch of a dummy satellite with a home-built rocket could further exacerbate tensions with the West over its nuclear drive. Western governments suspect Iran is trying to build an atomic weapon and have voiced concern that the technology used in its space program could be diverted to military use. Tehran has long refused to suspend uranium enrichment, a process which makes nuclear fuel but also the core of an atomic bomb. 
But locally, the Legislative Council election is less than a month away, and candidates running in the race have been working hard to win as many votes as possible. Today, we take a look at the candidates who are eyeing a seat in the Kowloon East constituency and what issues they want to raise in their election platform. Belinda Lloyd has more. Handing out leaflets has been a traditional way of encouraging voters to cast their ballots at the polls. But one Kwok King of the